Hello and welcome. In this video, we are excited to introduce the two new EV charging communication protocols, supported with the latest 2024.1 release of Typhoon Hill Control Center software regarding communication protocols for electric vehicle charging simulations, ISO 1511 8-20, Client, and Chatamo protocols. The ISO 1511 8-20 protocol is a key addition to our software, offering advanced features for EV communication and EV supply equipment, or EVSE testing. This protocol facilitates secure smart charging communication, allowing for automatic billing and enhanced security in the charging processes, and even vehicle-to-grid functionalities. You can now test all of these capabilities directly in your Hill model using the new ISO 1511 8-20 EVCC component in Typhoon Hill Control Center. We prepared a simple model to showcase this new component. As you can see, this component is similar to the ISO 1511 8-2 EVCC component released previously for testing communication with the electric vehicle charge controller. The main difference in the component terminals is that we have new connections in the output of the component for power ramp limitation. Go to pause message, EVSE minimum state of charge, and EVSE target state of charge. Those messages are mapped in the ISO 1511 8-20 standard which was used to develop this component, together with the IEC 61851 suite of standards. Let's take a look at the component properties to see what's new in this component. In this dialog, we can change all the properties related to a charging session following the ISO 1511-8 standard. These properties will be saved and executed in the hill. If you saw our previous videos about ISO 1511-8 protocol, you will note a lot of similarities here. The same dialog format was kept to maintain a user-friendly environment. Starting from the top, we can see the Connection Option section, where you can change the physical medium for the protocol from Ethernet to PLC. But note that the connection type is always Secured Connection because ISO 1511 8-20 mandates the use of TLS protocol. In the Payment Options, we still have external payment or contracts for plug and charge. Although you can choose between the two types of paying, Certificates are mandatory in this version of the standard for TLS-compliant connection, otherwise, the EV and EVSE won't be able to communicate. You can choose the folder where these EVCC certificates are located in this section. Here, you can see all the private key files and certificate files. For plug and charge, you need to include the contract files here as well. For this tutorial, we provide generic certificates from the protocol stack, since every EV charger manufacturer has its own certificate. In the Energy Service tab, you can choose to charge the car battery or to provide bidirectional power transfer. This last one allows for vehicle-to-grid testing by default. In the connector type, you can choose between different CCS connections according to the standard. And finally, in the control mode, you can choose between scheduled charging or dynamic charging. Dynamic charging allows the EVSE to request the EV to provide energy when requested, via bidirectional power transfer. Other options are similar to the ISO 1511 8-2 component, including the logging option, which can be selected from this drop-down menu. On the right side of the dialog box, you can set the charge session parameters. Those parameters are set according to the ISO 1511 8 standard. One new set of parameters that appear here is the minimum and maximum V2X energy request and the maximum supporting number of charge points for the EVCC. For this energy session, we will set the following parameters in order to have a simple charge session using the ISO 1511 8-20 protocol. Note that by setting the energy service to DC BPT, we are configuring a session to do bidirectional power transfer with dynamic charging. In this case, the charger also must be capable of doing bidirectional power transfer, meaning it must have ISO 1511 8-20 support and capable power electronics to push power to the grid. The dynamic charging mode will allow the EVSE to draw power from the EV battery whenever it is requested by the CPO. Currently, only EVCC is implemented with the ISO 1511 8-20 protocol in the Typhoon Hill Control Center. So, to present its functionality, we will use a simulated SEC in the host PC, communicating a charger session over the Ethernet. The same should happen when a real SEC is connected to the Hill device. After the simulation starts, you can see that the messages received by the EVCC are displayed in this SCADA widget. The sequence is quite similar to the ISO 1511 8-20, but in this case, we can see that the EV's battery is being discharged. That means that the vehicle-to-grid power flow is working, and with the SEC successfully controlling a session with bidirectional power transfer. In addition to ISO 1511 8-20, we are thrilled to announce the integration of the Chatamo protocol. 
Chatamo is a fast charging protocol widely used in electric vehicles, included in the IEC 61851 standard. Our software now includes a dedicated component for the Chatamo electric vehicle charge controller, expanding your testing capabilities for various charging scenarios. Chatamo is the first fast charging standard implemented, and it only works on DC charging. In this standard, the communication between the EVSE and EV is performed via the KN bus protocol, where the messages are defined by the standard itself. The communication scheme is master-slave, with the EV's battery management system, or BMS, being the master and the charger station the slave. The Chatamo inlet is a bit different from the CCS, it doesn't contain the AC pins and uses more contacts for low-level communication, control pilots and proximity pilot signals. In this diagram, it is possible to see the differences. Here is the circuit diagram of the Chatamo standard. The charging station is on the left side, and the electric vehicle is on the right side. On the upper corner is the connection from the charging station DC pins to the EV battery. The relays D1 and D2 control the charging process from the charging station, as well as the signal K which is controlled by the EV, corresponding to pins 2, 10, and 4 in the inlet. Proximity detection is responsible for detecting when the plug is connected. In the bottom, we have the CAN bus high and low lines. The communication flow for the Chatamo standard works as shown in this flowchart. The first step is to have the physical connection between the charging station and the EV via the plug. After that, the KN bus is connected, and the communication starts. The EV is the first to send messages. First, the EV informs the EVSC about its maximum and minimum voltage and the current for battery charging. This message comes from the EV's BMS. The EVSE runs a compatibility check to check if the charging station can provide power to that specific EV. Then, the EVSE replies to the EV with its voltage and current ratings. The EV computes the maximum load time and switches the K relay together with the KN message to enable vehicle charging. The EVSE then checks the cable resistance and performs an isolation check to verify if the cable can handle such a current. The EVSE then switches the D2 relay and the EV closes the contactor that connects the battery to the EVSE. In the pre-charge stage, the EVSE increases the output voltage to match the battery's voltage and the EV sends messages to the EVSE informing its status. The EV sends the request message with the target current. Once that current is reached, the charging loop executes. To demonstrate the charging sequence using the Chatamo protocol, we developed a model with a Chatamo EVCC component handling the low-level communication part, and the EVSE side with a simple simulation of EVSE behavior using the KN messages defined by the standard. On the left side of the screen, we have two subsystems. The EVSE subsystem does not implement the Chatamo sequence, it only sends the messages via the KN bus protocol. The KN bus protocol is used in a loopback in this case, where the messages of the EVSE are looped back in the hill to the EV. In this subsystem, we define constant values for the charging station. If you look inside the subsystem, you can see that we are sending and receiving messages to interact with the EV side. All this is done manually via SCADA inputs for this demonstration, but the model would work the same if the inputs were received from an external source. On the right side, you can see the low-level communication and the electrical representation of the digital twin of the battery and charger. In the middle, we have a representation of the plug as a 7-pole contactor. This contactor is controlled via SCADA inputs, simulating a connection between the EVSE and EV. On the right side of the main contactor is the EV side, with the battery model and the EV main contactor. On the left side, the EVSE is represented by a controlled current source that is controlled by the EVCC. In the battery settings, we define the initial state of charge to be 95% so that we can charge quickly for the demo. In order to start the charging, we need to first close the main contactor for the plug. After that, we need to close the D1 switch, which will set the signal IN1, measured at the EV side. The next step is to close switch D2, which will set the IN2 signal in the EV side. This works in parallel with the KN bus communication, as previously stated. After this happens, the EV can close its contactor, and the charging process may start. Logic, like EV ready, charge complete, and charge contactor control. These functions take outputs from the Chatamo EVCC component and implement basic logic inside, like checking the voltage and current constraints and when to stop charging. Let's now go to SCADA to execute the simulation of the compiled model. Let's now go to SCADA to execute the simulation of the compiled model. On the left panel, we have the EV control and monitoring, 
and on the right side, the received parameters by the EVSE are simulated. Let's start the simulation. To start a charging session, let's connect the EV plug to the EVSE by switching the charging cable contactor. Then we'll close the D1 switch to start the charging sequence check. In parallel, we need to send KN bus request to the EVSE, we do that via the Chatamo request button. After that, we can close the D2 switch, simulating the EVSE behavior. Now we've entered a running state, and the battery is being charged. It is possible to see that the battery state of charge, or soak, is increasing. By changing the present current, we change the current requested by the EV to the EVSE. This will affect the speed of charging. When 100% battery soak is reached, we are fully charged, and the charging session stops. Thank you for your attention. Check the video description for more resources on this topic, including how to download and get started with Typhoon Hill Control Center for free. You can also visit hill.academy to access free courses, expand your hill testing skill set, and get certified. Subscribe to our channel to get notified about new content.